Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Uh, thank you for joining me again today. And as you can see from the headline, I sincerely apologize to Johns Hopkins with regards to causing, it seems, them to have to take down their COVID site. Now, why would I say something like that? Maybe just coincidence, but just about a week ago, um, actually, just about um, on the 6th of February to be exact, I did this very important video and you can see the link in the description below. And it was about countries with high vaccine hesitancy. And I was talking about Papua New Guinea and comparing it to Australia and using the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center to demonstrate clearly that we have got some scientific work here to clarify. Now, I just have to say that when I heard that it was going to close, and this was just in the past couple of days, I mean, I was, I was shocked. I mean, similar to this guy. I mean, I was like, oh my goodness, is it because I spoke about this with regards to what had happened in Papua New Guinea? I, I don't know, but I'll take credit for it. I'll take credit for the fact that we are highlighting something that is so important that needs to be scientifically investigated, that it shouldn't be ignored. And the Johns Hopkins site was what I used. This was all the way back in about September 2022. And then I was highlighting that COVID-19 is uh, apparently over, but in Africa. This was when uh, Joe Biden had made that statement. And you can see the red dots all around here where COVID was spreading still, but Africa was clear. And so this kind of valuable information is what allows you from a scientific point of view to be able to analyze what is going on. And what you need is clean data. And that's what John Hopkins was able to do. And I'm gonna share with you just importantly what it is that they were able to do for three years now. For three years now, Johns Hopkins, I'll show you this here, was doing live data from January 2020. And sadly, by the 10th of March this year, after three years, they are going to stop no longer will they show it. And this was their um, their uh, present, their article, they wind down the pioneering pandemic data tracking. And this was an incredible piece of work that they did. And they really deserve credit for it because they have allowed science to be able to be demonstrated. And it's very sad that they're having to close this now. And I think that when I looked at their site today, just recently, and I'll show you the, the live thing with regards to Johns, Johns Hopkins as to what they, what they have on their, their site. This is where it is today. And you may not realize it, but actually it seems that when we look at the numbers here, this has dropped by almost 50, 40 to 50% in about a week. I'm not sure if I believe those numbers. And so if there's anything that we know is the pandemic hasn't disappeared, certainly not in highly vaccinated regions. And as such, we need to be able to study what is going on. Now, I think that it's important as well to highlight that um, Johns Hopkins, what was their reason for stopping? And you can see here in their article is that um, because of the widespread use of rapid home tests being significantly diminished, suddenly the utility and accuracy of the case data was not as valuable. And this is what I was saying, the cases are dropping, not because they're dropping, but because people are not doing it. But it is valuable, but insufficient to fully track and understand the pandemic. And they are concerned about the persistent across the board declines in the quality and availability of COVID-19 data. And here we have a problem because some parts of the world want us to just move on. COVID is over. Yeah, and that's what we can think. The problem is, is that excess deaths are going up across the world. It seems to be related to COVID infection. I'm not sure how you're going to ignore it. And so we have a problem when the science is disconnected from the reality. 
And that's something that I think is really, really critical. The data in terms of even what was shown with the WHO in April 2022, I got into trouble because I showed this map about the pandemic being disappeared in Africa. And this was in April 2022. And you can see this is from the WHO data here. You can see that this region of Africa is the lowest region that was affected. And this data allowed me to be able to then predict that if we didn't have a resolution of circulation of the virus beyond April 2022, we had a problem. And at that point, I was concerned that we may have seen a pattern where Omicron not only evaded immunity um, generally, but was not able to be controlled effectively in the vaccinated cohort of the population. And the fact that we still have COVID-19 circulating after a year when everyone therefore should have been exposed indicates that there is a problem with regards to achieving herd immunity. So it's really, really critical. We should be still getting this information. This information really should guide us. And if we're not getting the home tests, we should therefore be getting the tests of the wastewater, something, something that gives us a prediction as to what is happening in terms of the spread of the virus in the population. Let me give you some simple advice here. If you are following the science, you will know that although we may have overreacted in some aspects of the pandemic, this is not a disease to take lightly. And it's a disease that can cause multiple effects, certainly with reinfections. And if reinfections are occurring in the highly vaccinated regions, we then have the problem of the immune response that occurs after each infection. We need to understand the patterns and the only way we'll be able to do this is by actively studying the SADs. So um, this was just a quick update with regards to what was happening with the COVID-19 and the coronavirus. I too, like this guy, am very, very disappointed that this is going away, but the day moves on and we'll find other ways to be able to find and share information. So look forward to sharing more updates with you. And please remember, if you want to see more posts, podcasts and videos, join me on Substack. Have a great evening.